Hello, everyone. I'm the Vacuuminator. I'm Buster. And this week in Toku, we're going to be discussing a ton of toys, a stupid rumor, and Saburu Kimura's stupid face. But before all that, Buster, how are you doing? Not great. Today was not good. Uh, very off day for me. But hey, we all have our off days, and I will try not to make this an off podcast. Yeah, yeah, I could say I'm I'm very much the same. Uh, I mean, I think people are are pretty well able to surmise i've been going through a bit of a rough patch lately and that's why i haven't been able to get personal channel stuff done in like two months now but uh yeah yeah it's it's not been a it's not been a great time and not been uh, optimal. To, to, yeah, it's not been optimal and today definitely didn't help with that but yeah. we'll get into that a little later um but first and foremost, getting into housekeeping, obviously the show is a day late and uh, hopefully not a dollar short this week. Uh, and that's because uh, immediately after we released last week's episode, Hasbro announced that they were going to be doing a fan first event on uh, the Tuesday of the following week. And we normally release right at noon on Tuesday. And they said that the spam first event would be starting at 11 and going into the noon hour. Uh, which basically counter-programs us, uh, especially because it part of the event was going to be Power Rangers news. And so uh, we made the executive decision to postpone a day. Uh, hopefully that didn't inconvenience any of you or ruin your Tuesday morning commute, but uh, or Tuesday evening commute, I suppose. Um, but... Uh, we're, we're here now, and we're, we're going to get into the event a little bit later in the show. But uh, before we do all that, uh, I want to remind everyone that this podcast is brought to you by Modular Media, the creative co-op that we are members of. If you want to support the show and the um, co-op in general, please give this podcast a like, uh, comment on the video down below, subscribe, and ring the bell in order to enable notifications if you are listening on YouTube. To get every episode of this and all the other programs we do here at Modular Media as they come out. Also, follow us on whatever podcasting network you prefer and are currently listening to this on. Follow us on Twitter at the Modular Media to get all the updates on when and why we're doing things. Like uh, you would have, you would have already known that this was postponed if you're following us on Twitter. Um, and if you just uh, are into Reddit and want to keep up with us and post memes and stuff like that, go join our subreddit r slash Modular Media. But uh, that's all the housekeeping for this week. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the news with uh, something that was revealed. The following day on Twitter, um, which is way free of Super 7's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Ultimates, which is going to be um, the Dino Megazord, Lord Zed, Lord Zed's Throne, the Blue Ranger, the Black Ranger, and Finster. Um, now, obviously, this is a lot of figures of things that we've things we've gotten figures of very recently already um like mo most of this market is covered um but it's it's new figures in the style of ultimates which is slightly different from stuff like the lightning collection or sh figure arts um a lot more accessories than you would normally get with western toys um like for instance there's both a zach and an adam head with the black ranger um and uh there is one thing specifically that i'm pretty excited about which is zed's throne um we haven't really gotten zed's throne from any other toy companies and the fact that they're doing it as a separate release is pretty smart in my opinion because it's it's so much plastic that it costs almost the same amount as an additional figure so packing it separate from zed means people who just want the zed can just get that and people who maybe already have lightning collection zed can look at this and say oh hey here's something from this line i want that can add to my lightning collection display and hey for you customizers out there um if you want to if you want to throne for your lord draken like the one he sat on in that live action short i'm pretty sure that was meant to be just zed's throne with battle damage so you, you yeah and i was that. like this, this, like what my first thought when you i saw this throne was like wow this looks like a better version of that bad throne that they sold with like legacy draken at bar morphicon 2018 yeah so i'm 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 definitely uh into 
that specific part of this wave. The rest of it doesn't really do anything for me just because, again, it's characters we've gotten recently in figure form. And I'm not super into the Ultimates aesthetic, but they do look like good figures. Um, uh, do you have anything else to add on these, Buster Corp? They look decent. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I should also add, though, that uh, Brian Flynn, the uh, owner of Super 7, said that now that this wave is out of the way and they basically hit all the major characters, they're going to start going for some much more obscure stuff because we've now got the full team, um, which I would not be surprised if that just means stuff like Monsters of the Week. But when I hear obscure, I want them to really get obscure. Dark Rangers! Get- yeah, give us Dark Rangers. Give give a shit nobody else would give us. Like, g- give me Dark Rangers. Give me, um, give me, give me Bulk and Skull. We haven't gotten Bulk and Skull from anybody. No, or... I you think they would do that as, like, some sort of con exclusive. Yeah, um, or, hell, here's, here's my ultimate obscure pick. Give us a Quagmire figure. I would hate that, but fine. Yeah, I, I would be into that just for the hell of it, but, yeah, uh, just for the memes. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, just like like uh, how we were trying to be lightning collection robo dice. Yeah. Um, but moving on, we also had a Bandai reveal on the same night, which is uh, something that had been teased and we all kind of knew was coming because sounds had been found in both the toys. But uh, there is going to be a dual Ranger Key and Sentai set of Hikunin Sentai Akiba Ranger to celebrate that show's 10-year anniversary. Um, and these keys, the Ranger Keys are specifically going to be compatible with the Memorial Edition mobile pirates and uh these look pretty good uh obviously it's it's very much the same stuff we've been getting with these toys in the past there's nothing super unique about them except that they are specifically for those characters and they will activate those sounds but it's it's cool and fun that they're doing it and it's one of the few times that it actually makes sense to me that something is a premium bandai exclusive because Pretty much only adult collectors will be interested in this. Yeah, because the Keeper Ranger is targeted at adults. Like, it's, it's, it's literally, the main protagonist is an otaku. Yeah. Do um, you have anything to add on these, Buster? Or are you at all interested in them? No. <laughs> I need to watch a Keeper Ranger. I heard good things, but a lot you of it... You haven't it's, seen a Keeper Ranger? I've seen, like, episodes and clips, but, like, I haven't watched the full thing. Oh, you gotta sit down. You got you gotta sit down and do that at some point soon. That that first mm-hmm. season is Chef's Kiss. Maybe, maybe I will. I mean, there's some good bits as well. Clips I like. It's just I need to watch the full thing. Yeah, yeah, and, and definitely get to that. Um, but uh, recently a um new Blu-ray box set of um Common Rider Deno was released. That no, in- sorry, no, this this was in 2017. Well, why are we just now getting this translated then? Like, like the, the box set was released in 2017, and it's oh, continue. Well, that's recent, yeah, relatively. Decent. Yeah. This article is from last week. Shut up. <laughs> um, but on, on that box set, there were some new uh, special features. One of which was a text interview in the booklet um, with the actress who portrayed Hana, Yuriko Shiratori. I'm gonna say is how you pronounce that last name. Um, which, which, um, for those of you who don't know, and this was something I was actually unaware of because for those of you who don't know, I haven't seen Deno, um, the character of Hannah kind of disappears from the show partway through, and we never really knew why until this interview, um, where she was asked specifically about why she chose to leave the show. So I'm just going to go ahead and read out that full quote. Um, to tell you the truth, a part of myself still remains back there. I'm so that... Happy that I have a chance to talk about it today, thanks to the fans who continue to love the series. I want to apologize to everyone involved back in then. Because of my poor health, I was unable to continue filming. I pushed myself too hard and lost balance between my mind and soul, and there were so many days where I struggled knowing that I couldn't see Hannah to the end. Now that the time has passed, I'm in a much better place than I was before. In my spare time, I do gardening, And I do dressmaking as a hobby. Plants bring me a lot of joy. I enjoy picking fabric and creating clothes. Feeling accomplished when I finish something is what makes me who I am. So 
basically uh, this this kind of long running mystery in the in at least the Western writer fandom has finally been solved, which is that this actress left the show because of health conditions, which is is a neat little little um thing to finally have come out after all these years, and uh, I'm glad she managed to get the help she needed and is doing better today. Yeah, we knew it was health condition. We didn't know what specifically. This sounds like over working like overworked herself yeah um which you know it's glad that she's better now but like that still like happens and it sucks oh yeah it's a it's a real big issue especially in um japan but uh let's go ahead and move on to a bit of a follow-up from something from last week which is that we now have a trailer for common writer gem's smart brain and the 1000 percent crisis which reveals a ton of details about the plot line and stuff that's going to be happening in this. So if you don't want spoilers, jump to like five minutes ahead, I guess. Um, basically, what is revealed in this is that the plot is going to be um, Dan is brought back as a human gear by Fowser, and um, uh, Fowser ends up getting corrupted by Ark via... Um, his uh, Humagear assistant that he got in that special from, I think it was like a year or so ago. We and... covered it like a year ago. Mm -hmm. And then the Ark apparently has access to Lovelyka's data, um, which is all very interesting, and I can't wait to see how they actually connect those dots. But, yeah, uh, and Smart Brain from Common Other Fies is here, apparently. Somehow. Uh, but also revealed for this trailer is new suits that will be debuting in this show. We are getting Common Rider Thousand Arc and Common Rider Gem Gem Musho Gamer, which is basically uh, the the Arc suit but with a repainted Fowser helmet and a Gem version of Muteki Gamer. Um, they both look pretty okay in my opinion not super impressive but solid suits yeah like the like uh, i really like the sephiroth hair like uh get new suit has and i like like how the simplicity of the thouser suit where it's basically just let's take the zaya suit and just add like the arc parts to it and that just looks really cool it just basically combines two of my favorite zero one suits into one so i really like that suit <laughs> Yeah, that, that helmet does flow very well with the rest of the suit, much more than I would assume it would. Um, but yeah, although, so, like, I will say, oh, this is very nitpicky, and I understand why they did this. I wish his Muteki, like, gamer form was, like, and it was, like, a Muteki Gasha instead of, like, a Maximum Mighty Gasha. Yeah, that's right, because they show the Gasha in the trailer, and it's, uh, it... I wouldn't even say it's a Maximum Mighty. It looks more yeah, like the uh, Dual Gears. Yeah, yeah, it's very, it's the Dual Gear, but just like, it, it like, it functions like Maximum Mighty is what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah. Like, and like, I get why they did it, because that, the, the toy it would have to connect to is from a V Cinema that not everyone will have the toy for, and you would have to bundle that, and that would increase the price. But like, it oh. just, the, the I just like the form, 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 you know, form and function. Form and function, just like, and also just like it like would parallel uh, Emu's Muteki Gamer better. Yeah, and also like I would assume the same audience that would be interested in buying the gimmick toys that are going to come out of this would be the same people who bought the gimmick toy for that V Cinema. Yeah. But uh, overall, this uh, this special is looking like a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to it whenever it comes out and gets subbed. Yeah, it's good. Hopefully, it's you know, only dumb fun. I know, like everyone's complaining. Oh, X A is getting over melt. Come on, guys, we just enjoy the ride. It's not like if this was like the main course they were feeding us. No, we still have Revice. We still have like all these other shows coming. Like, yeah, yeah, and I mean, like X A's good though. Why wouldn't you milk it? Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. I guess because like it it's gotten like, over like exposed, but like yeah, you know, you know, it's it's not like it's still there's still other seasons. They're not like shoving like they're not like replacing Revice with an X A show or something. Yeah. Um, moving on, uh, back into the realm of toy news. Uh, the next Super Sentai mainline mini plot has been revealed, which uh, fairly predictable, but it's Don Zenkaio. And um, I gotta admit, this is uh, the nicest looking mini plot I've seen in a while. I really dig the proportions on this thing, and it looks extremely 
well articulated. Yeah, I, I like the like I wasn't like a big fan of the suit when it first showed up in Zenkaiju, but Don Brothers really sold me on this mecha, so I'm very I'm very interested to pick one up myself. Yeah, Mini Paw is one of those things where it's like if I was a a model kit guy, I would be all over this line. Just because it's it's like all the design appeal of the deluxe mechas, but without the the space um, hogging and way better articulation. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'll pick up this one or like the deluxe like one you can get in like in like the regular line. But either way, you know, I'm very interested to get a, a version of this design one day. Yeah. Um. Now on to something. Uh, and I wish we didn't have to talk about. Um, I legit thought we were gonna skip this when you put it when this got announced because we don't trust this source. Yeah. Um. So. Um. Yesterday, the Illuminati put out a teaser saying that they had some interesting uh news to reveal to the fandom, and um a few hours later, went and posted that news, which is. A rumor, I want to preface that this is a rumor, it does not come from an official Hasbro source. The source that they are citing is a leaker who has been extremely hit or met in the past, and the Illuminati themselves have been extremely hit or miss in the past. But the, so the news that they are reporting is that David Yost will be returning for Power Rangers Season 30, which is the next season. And um, in this article, they go on to um, say that it will be for one episode and that it will be part of the sort of narrative that has been being rumored for almost a year now that this this is going to be essentially a Power Rangers hexagon of making a mostly original footage season that's about celebrating the past and kind of putting an end cap on the the era of Power Rangers that we've been in thus far before Hasbro takes the franchise in a new direction. Um, I personally don't trust that. I don't believe that's going to happen. It sounds really dramatic and out there and almost fanfic level to me. Um, if it does happen... I won't lie and, and say that I wouldn't be interested in seeing how they'd play it out, but I just don't believe it's going to happen right now because there's been no official sources even hinting at this, um, which is the same way I feel about David Yost returning. David Yost returning to put in his ending on Billy and like ending, the sh ending his time on the show the way he would want to do it um, would be a nice thing to happen. Heck, I... I Fan booked it in my videos on what I would have done with Megaforce, but uh, I, I just there's there's no reason to believe that this is what's happening because as I said on Twitter the day we got this news, the Illuminati to me is basically that bitchy gossip coworker who nobody really likes, but we all have to pay slight attention to because they did happen to be right about Dave cheating on his wife that one time. Uh, that's a great analogy. Uh, I'm gonna give my take on this. Uh, here's the here's the big bubble pop that like why I don't trust this. They say the episodes are gonna clock at 44 minutes each. Yeah. What? And like what? like this doesn't really line up with like maybe unless they're like really gonna rush to production. We know like we know there's like something about the production being six weeks or at least for a character six weeks. So just confusing and weird and what the hell's going. I don't trust any of- I, honestly, this basically just mean like, until Hasbro says something, or like, we, like, I see a trailer in my face, I don't care what season 30 is, everyone shut up about rumors! Yeah, I, I really don't. Uh, this article specifically, I don't trust anything in here until either Hasbro or David Yost himself confirms. Yeah, if David Yost says something, then he, like, then, like, I feel like that will be like a thing, and I feel like he can't mm -hmm. say it either, he doesn't want to disappoint fans, or like you know he did nda yeah Either i mean, like yeah what what you said if he if he's not signed on he he's not gonna say it for fear of inciting a riot and if he is signed on he probably can't say it until hasbro says it first so yeah. or maybe like this is a thing in negotiation like yeah we'll say. And, like, I don't know if this has been an issue at all since this article came out, but if, if people have been adding him, asking him if this is legit or not, fucking stop it. 
Yeah, I heard some people were doing it, but I didn't see any of like that on my timeline. Because I'll be honest, I've been like really trying to distance myself from Toku and Power Rangers Twitter. Right. Uh, I know that probably isn't good because I run a podcast where we talk all the going ons, but like, man, that those the, I I can't do it anymore, fellas. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's uh, there's 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 a little too much toxic radiation around here yeah. these days. But, uh, hey, speaking of toxic radiation, let's move on to the reason the podcast got delayed. Um, So Hasbro announced on uh, last Tuesday that they were going to be doing a double build Hasbro uh, Transformers and Power Rangers Fan First Tuesday event with uh, it beginning at 11 o'clock with Transformers and Power Rangers taking over at noon. Now, I want to... I want to emphasize there that they said Power Rangers would be taking over at noon. Not that Power Rangers would be going from noon till 1 o'clock. They didn't even say Transformers would be going from 11 to noon. They just said that was their start time. So anyway, let's go into why I had to say that. Um, The event started off, uh, and they basically did a little tongue-in-cheek thing and played it up kind of like it was a Buzz Blast stream, which... Was a little cheesy in execution. It was the peak. It was the peak of the conference. <laughs> I I thought it was cheesy in execution, and I saw some people saying it was super cringe. I don't think it was that bad, but it was like this is a good idea. You need to workshop it a little. Yeah, I feel like if there is going to be more fan first whatever days, like I feel like they're they're this is like this is a thing they want to try and. Honestly, yeah. I hope they keep trying at it. Like, you know, you don't, you have to get, keep like going at something to get better. And that goes yeah. for like anything from small people to big companies. Yeah, yeah. Keep, keep doing this gimmick of it being a mock Buzz Blast stream, but try and make it more like the ones from the show. And maybe next time, instead of that commercial break, uh, have one of the actors do a quick cameo. Yeah, I mean, like, it doesn't even have to be from like the set. Yeah, because like, they're, that set's probably not there anymore. Just to have them film at their home, just being like, hello, I'm XX, and you're watching the blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but uh, let's go ahead and get into the first set of reveals, which was the second wave of Target-exclusive Ninjetti Rangers, which is going to be uh, Red Ninja Rocky, Yellow Ninja Aisha, and Pink Ranger Cat. Um, now, I think we pretty much set our piece on these in general when the first set of these figures got revealed. Um, I've never cared for Ninjetti as a cost as a costume or a concept. I I think they just don't look very much like what I think of when I think Power Rangers. And I think having an additional mode in between civilian and Power Ranger seems incredibly um, silly and counterintuitive because why wouldn't you just turn into a Power Ranger if it's that much more effective than being a ninja? Um, That being said, I think the the basic sculpt for these figures is really good looking and these are probably the best figures of uh, these designs that we're ever going to get. I just have no interest in picking up any of them except for Rocky because I'm trying to go Red Ranger complete on the Lightning Collection. That being said, I'm not pre-ordering Rocky and I'm not rushing out to pick him up whenever he drops. He's he's just one of those ones that's like, yeah, I'll get him when I see him and I have the money. Um, and he's not even the best looking one out of this set. I actually argue that that's Aisha because her civilian head sculpt looks spot on to me. The other two are kind of uh, blurry in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I already said I hate these designs, and I can't really. I don't know what other ways to say that. <laughs> but like, I'm glad it was quick. Well, then again, the whole thing was 15 minutes, but for 15 minutes, at least. Yeah. Um. Uh. An, an another little touch I I do want to mention before moving on. Um. I like that they gave uh more. They gave different um uh box art to the cat figure to sort of differentiate it from the Kimberly one if you're looking at it on the pegs or you're a Minton box collector. That was a nice touch. Um but then moving on to the next thing they showed, which I honestly was not expecting to see during this stream. I thought this was another two or three streams down the road. Uh they full on showed off the um lightning collection power sword prop replica, which looks pretty dang good it's not going to be as big as the legacy one but then again i always thought the legacy one looked a little too big in my opinion and it's it's not like this is a this is a common rider roleplay sword where it's just a stubby little twig of a thing it does 
look pretty sizable compared to the model they have in one of these pictures. Um, and of course, it's going to have all the lights and sounds you would expect from it. Multiple buttons, it can play the theme song, and the blade can light up a red LED, which uh, I don't care for that feature. I thought it was stupid on the Dragon Dagger, and I don't like it here. But uh, overall, I think this looks pretty good, and uh, I, I'm not I'm not interested in like rushing out and getting this, but I am interested in this overall because we've we know from leaks and we've seen in the product description of this that they are doing a power lance and if they're gonna do the whole set of weapons, I'm really interested to see how a legacy or a lightning collection style power blaster turns out once it's all said and done. Um do you have anything to add, Buster? Uh, yeah, cool. I'm not gonna buy it because it's two hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah, I think around this time is when we got the Pinata, which is legit the best product I'm most interested in they showed. Really? Because I kind of looked at that whole thing and I was like, they, they still make Pinatas? Mm. The kids the kids even play with Pinatas at birthday parties? Is that still a thing? I, I've I felt, seen a couple. Okay, because I, like, I felt like Pinatas were on their way out when I was a kid. Like, I, I only ever once or twice went to a birthday party where there was a Pinata. Uh, here in the Midwest, the Pinatas, I still see them. I don't know. And then they're, they're nice novelty items. They're nice novelties. It was like you make you're they're there to break them. They're not like collector things unless you're a pin, I'm pretty sure there's a pinata collecting community. I don't know. I just like that it's a funny thing. And like that was the best showcase and the most the natural the guys felt, because you could really tell they were trying to rush through this. They're like, okay, uh we got like ten minutes before we have to edit this all together. Go, 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 you know. I didn't feel like it was rushed. I, I felt like the stream was focused, but that that's focused. just... That's yeah, just I, I, it, it was focused, but like I could also tell there was like a bit like... It, it, I say it's well-paced, but like I, the product reveals were well-paced. The actual like wording, like the actual like sentencing, you especially with like the amount of times they like mess up and have to redo lines, that was rushed, yeah. if that makes sense. But like, uh, anyway. any, anyways, all that pinata discourse aside, uh, let, let's um, go ahead and get into the final thing they showed which was, uh, as I correctly predicted on Twitter a few hours beforehand, the Zap Dragon Zord, um, which looks pretty good for a nutter figure of the Dragon Zord. Um, uh, I, I really like that they're giving it a bunch of hand options and that it's coming with effects parts for the missile fingers like the Ultimate figure did. And um, it, it looks to be pretty well articulated. They showed it can bind into Dragon Zord in battle mode, which, as we discussed last week, is my preferred combination. And it looks really good in that mold. And um, that also shows that it's going to come with the additional staff piece for the tail and chest piece. Uh, and if you look at the chest piece, there's actually the way the little red dots on the outside of the inner core are colored. Looks like those might be electronic, like the original. Looks like those might light up. But um, the only other feature that they did show, aside from all that, is that they're uh, that like the uh, Megazord. There's going to be a couple of minifigures included with this, and that they'll be able to be displayed in the Dragon Zords cockpit in the head i i talked about this when they showed the dino mega zord the cockpits aren't in the heads on the zords they're in the chests this isn't pacific rim that's a like i i, I hate to be that obsessive detail-oriented fanboy but it's like come on you're trying to market these as like high-end collector's items that that's that's not where that goes you got all that room in the big chest piece you can put that right there but uh that was the last thing they showed. They uh, then wrapped up the stream, and uh, that took all of 13 minutes. And uh, Twitter I was not happy. What? Twitter was not happy. Yeah, I was about to say. Um, everybody was sent into a pretty big tiff. Um, I I wasn't mad about it. I was just kind of like, okay, really? Cause yeah, that's the same. I, I, I know I don't speak for everybody, but I was kind of expecting to see the next full late wave of the lightning collection because the last wave they revealed just started hitting stores a couple weeks ago and we've known what the next two waves are via leaks since like um i want to say september of last year and this is the first power rangers event we've gotten since december of last year so i think 
um, everybody was pretty much caught off guard, especially because Power uh, Transformers did get a full hour. They did go for a full hour discussing all kinds of things and showing reveals, whereas all we got here was 13 minutes of Lightning Collection reveals, a small... And nothing else, even though they had tons of Dino Fury product on a shelf behind them that they could have talked about, um, which is probably the most egregious thing about this stream to me. All that Dino Fury product was right there, and they didn't even mention it. Um, yeah, that was, that, that's that's bad. Honestly, like, and it's it's disappointing for me just because like Power Rangers has been the one Hasbro team that's actually been pretty good so far about showing off main show product. Like, Transformers, Marvel, and, um, oh, what was the other one? Fortnite? That was, not Fortnite. Um, G.I. Joe? Uh, it should come to me. Transformers, Marvel. Star Wars. Star Wars, yeah. Um, those all have kid-oriented lines on the shelves, and they never talk about them in their Fan First Fridays. Or fan first events. Power Rangers has always paid at least a little mention to the kids' products at the fan first events. So to see them not do that here really upsets me because, like, yes, there are as many adult collectors buying toys now as there are adults buying toys for their kids, but you should still have an even distribution of attention. I've always felt that way with those other brands, and I feel that way here. Mm -hmm. um, Agreed. Uh, I. I can kind of justify in my head that they didn't show the next wave of Lightning Collection just because, like, they may not be aware of how available the current wave is so far. They may not, they may have not had final approval on something and had to cut the uh, script down, which which is something I want to say. This was obviously much more scripted than past um, fan first events have been. Um, it was a lot more focused. There was a much smaller team present it seemed like because they were doing the same thing during the transformers event with how much more focused they seemed it seems like they've kind of figured out okay these are the people who are good at presenting and these are the people who are just good at making toys let's just put the people who are good at presenting and have interesting things to say on these streams so that it doesn't seem so cluttered and chaotic um mm -hmm. But uh, the way the stream ended, it felt very abrupt. It it felt like, um, like you know how sometimes you'll be writing a video and you'll have a long drawn out end and you'll go, oh, this makes me sound like a blowhard, so you'll just cut it way down. Yes, and that's what that's what the end of the stream felt like. And I I really think they probably planned to show the next wave of lightning collection, and either they didn't get final approval on something, or um, they realized there was something wrong with one of the figures, and they didn't want another Lunar Wolf situation on their hands. Especially because I think they're still trying to fix Lunar Wolf. Yeah, um, because there's like eight variants of that figure now. Ugh, that's uh, a mess. Uh huh. Um, so yeah. overall, I'm not as down on this event as most people are. I think as as just what it was, it was very good and a slight step up from Power Rangers fan first events we've gotten in the past. But I would have really liked it to have been longer and I would have liked to have seen more focus on the kids products and more highlighting of a few other things in general. Like they didn't talk about the comics at all. And last time they talked about the comics, Altarium War was just starting up. That's over now. We've got a new writer on one of the books and we've got two new books going. They could have taken a minute to promote those. Yeah, I mean, they plugged season two, but they didn't give us a release date for part two. I I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure because that hasn't been approved yet, because that last episode just got done editing, of course, it's not been Bennett. But, uh, mm. yeah, I don't know, it's, it's just, it's more of like, I, mean, I think my thing of Hasbro is not that they're being, like, terrible, I mean, there is terrible things and things we can critique about them, it's more so they're playing it very close to the cards, and I'm sorry, like, with how, like, this isn't me, I don't think, I would, I would not consider me, uh, like, a, like, super, like, my old interest is Power Rangers, but there's a lot of, like, Power Rangers is my main thing, it's the thing I go to, like, for, like, internet present people, and they, they, they are not happy with, like, how it's being, they need, like, information, they need, like, context, and for those people, and that, those are, that's basically yeah. most Power Rangers fans, and... I said on Twitter earlier today, it, it, it's and it's the same with any fandom. You give fans an inch, they want a continent. And the fact of the matter is, um, a lot 
a lot of people just aren't satisfied with Hasbro right now, which is, in my opinion, a pretty harsh considering the era of Neo Saban we were in before all of this. And there were even people talking about it on Twitter just before the event started up. Like, no matter how bad the, the Hasbro toys are or how mishandled distribution is, don't forget the state of things we were in with Bandai of America just before Hasbro took over. That Ninja Steel toy line was awful. The Dino Charge toy line was okay. Actually, no, it wasn't okay. It was pretty good. But a lot of other Bandai of America lines that had come before that were poor to really bad. Like, the before Dino Charge, the last really good Bandai America line there had been was Mystic Force. Yeah, even as, like, someone who loves RPM, that Tommy line was kind of not great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm trying to come to the big corporate entity's defense, or I'm a Hasbro bootlicker, or I have a double standard, or whatever... Um, buzzword. Whatever buzzword you, you people are throwing out on Twitter today. But I, I do feel like the fandom has been a little harsh on Hasbro in the wake of this. And this, this stream isn't as bad as people are making it out to be, but it could have been better. Yeah, there's nuance. We need nuance. Like, nuance. Yeah, I feel yeah. like people are like, it has to be like all this or all that. And I feel like, especially in the Power Rangers fandom, maybe because the series itself has been very, like, good and evil. But <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, just... like I said on Twitter earlier today, I'm, I'm referencing my Twitter a lot in this episode. Yeah, go, go there, follow him. There, there's a difference between a double standard and a nuanced opinion. I try to have nuanced opinions on this show. Yeah. And what? Same same to me. I mean, like, literally, like, I feel like... I don't I, I know it's like... Like, it just... It, it's still, like, frustrating, but, like, you gotta, like, look at why... You can't just say, oh, it's all frustrating because they're not doing great. It's, it's, it's because frustrating for this and this and reason. Like, you can't just be general. Like, a, a thing, like, a thing doesn't collapse because all of the pegs are gone. It's because a few pegs are gone, you know? Yeah. Like, a few key components. I don't know. Maybe this is just me, video essay mind, getting into this silly toku stuff. I don't know. But uh, that is it for the news for this week. Um, and I'm delaying an episode for this po- for Hasbro again. <laughs> <laughs> Like, as, as much as we're like, okay, you know, you didn't do as bad as everyone says, I'm not delaying in a podcast for you ever again, Hasbro. <laughs> I might veto that decision, but we'll see. Um, in the meantime, uh, before we move on to new releases, uh, Buster, do you mind if we take a short intermission? I gotta take care of stuff in Iron. Uh, sure. Alright, Buster, what is our first new release of the week? Pinatas, I kid. <laughs> Uh, covered under Revice, episode 30, Say You, Say Me, sorting stuff out from your youth. Oh god, this episode was a mix of highs and lows. I don't know what you're talking about, Buster. I really like this episode. The first time I saw it, in Common Rider Wizard. Wait, they did this in Wizard? Oh, the soccer! Yeah, uh, this, is, oh. this is straight up that two-parter from towards the end of Wizard, where he where we find out Arto was really into soccer. Yeah! And he had he did, to give it up to be a Common Rider. Yeah, it does gotta give that vibes. First, let's address the uh, racist in the room. <laughs> uh, yeah, Saburo Kimura is actually in this episode playing a fictionalized version of himself who was Iki's senpai in high school and what? was also the head of their soccer club. What? He, like, and he still says he's a voice actor, so it's and, like... And they, and they act like he's... They treat him like fucking Shotaro Ishinomori himself descended from on high to be in the show. Treat him like a like a like the second coming of Christ. And it was like that's not the person who's Christ. That's not Christ too. Yeah, that's 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 uh that's that's, that's diet Jesus right there. Yeah, and I, I, that, that's that's a bit too nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, not, he's diet off brand Jesus. No, that, no, calling calling Saburu Jesus is a bit too nice in general. Like any kind of G. I would. All right, he's diet Judas Iscariot. All right, there that works. Uh, yeah, and they like they go like oh uh, like I it's kind of funny how Vice hypes him up because oh, that's his character. So there's a bit of comedy uh with that. 
But, but there's, like, there's so many gratuitous close-ups of his face. Yeah. Like, oh, look, it's Saburo Kimura. We got the actual Saburo Kimura in the show. He's all backlit. Look at his look at his chiseled face with his goatee. Isn't he sexy? And I'm like, no, he's not. But thank you for giving me all these close-ups. He's totally going to be the thumbnail this week. No! <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, uh... I don't know, like, like I said, I'm... I don't dislike this plotline because I enjoyed it in Wizard. Yeah, and they do do some good stuff with it. It's just the elephant in the room and the gratuitous sucking off of the racist that just makes mm -hmm. it uncomfortable. And it's also extremely obvious. Like, it's so obvious that they want us to think the dead man is Iki's jealous friend that I'm like... Either it is gonna be him, and we're gonna groan at how predictable it was, or they're gonna pull, they're gonna swerve us and make it Saburo, in which case it'll make no damn sense. Yeah, I mean, it kind of does with the whole, like, oh, look, he makes an evil face at the end of the episode or something. Uh, but, like, yeah, this is... This feels like we should have done this, like, in the 10s. Why are we doing this in the 30s? Yeah, I mean, like, especially after last episode, like, they played that up, like, oh, Hiromi's gonna be back in the show now. Hiromi wasn't in this episode at all. Yeah, I mean, they Daiji said he's in and, hiding, but like... Daiji and Sakura were barely in this episode. Yeah, and maybe they had this plot written out, but they had, like, toy line stuff. They could have made this, like, the Barrett Rex debut. Yeah. Like, possibly. Uh, I don't know, it's just... This, like, it's... It, it's oddly... It's oddly placed in the season. It's not... Gr like, it's a bit, like, weird how they, they're, like... Uh, gratuitous and like I, it, it is there's funny moments there's like i like when revy and vice are on that talk show that's funny but like just the, the real world uncomfortable implications is a bit much for me i'm sorry yeah and it doesn't help that, that this is a two-parter so he's also gonna be in next episode yeah like this isn't the worst episode of revice so far but it's certainly far from the best and it it, it, it really just feels like like, last week, I, I gave the show a break because I was like, oh, it's it's a clip show, we're in between arcs, we're doing a fun little side thing, this is okay. But, like, now now that we're out of that and we're doing this as the next thing, it feels like an A-plus student turning in a C. Yeah, a C with their very problematic partner. All right, well, uh, speaking of problematic... Uh, okay. let's... From racism to incest, comment under revise, hyper battle DVD, koala versus kangaroo, crying out, love smack, and center in the we of the wedding. I don't care if I mislear those words, because I was very uncomfortable during this battle. Uh, yeah, this, this, this is the most roller coaster hyper battle DVD I have seen in a long time, because, like... For every good thing in this, there's a really what the fuck thing. Like a uh, vice learning what weddings are. Oh, that's that's kind of fun because yeah, he's a demon. He wouldn't know about that. Vice having big lips in a wedding dress as an allusion to Sabra Kimura's blackface controversy. That's not okay. Yeah, so not to mention like they have like like I mean their fantasies of the seventeen year old dating like adults. That's I mean like. The fact that that was played up as a fantasy and even she was like, no, this is not okay, that that made me go like, all right, that's fine. Um, but and it then, was really played up for comedy and not like Yeah, anything. and I also, I also liked that she was upset she wasn't the one in the wedding dress in the actual plan. That was funny to me. Yeah. But then Daichi being clearly uncomfortable in the wedding dress and Ugh. then the the off-screen gay incestuous kiss, which is played up for laughs, and then uh, the not incestuous but gay kiss that is also played up for laughs was was really ridiculous. Um, the one between Vice and George? Uh, George, jo or no, Hiromi and Daiji, they had one. Oh, okay. Remember, because first it's Hiromi and Iki, and then Iki tries to run off and, and they trip over each other and kiss. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah that, like well, that was like as soon as like when Daji like get gets like knocked out and then just like Kagro comes it's like brother you kiss me I was like ah stop why this yeah is the final appearance of Kagero everybody probably yeah. maybe I don't know I don't know he might appear for the summer movie uh he might be in the finale yeah I don't that's like, that'll be that'll be a very sad way to say goodbye to that really cool character mm. uh um 
Uh, oh. But yeah, uh, but like the the fight with the build form was funny. I actually like I actually find Baby Vice's voice more tolerable than the actual Vice voice. <laughs> yeah, I liked everything about that fight except for the fact that the finisher was a rider kick. I'm like, it's a boxing glove form, and you're not gonna make the finisher a rider punch. Yeah, that's odd. And also, uh, what else? There was a. Oh, oh, okay, throughout this entire special, there's this weird filter on it that was also in the mystery. It was more yeah. tolerable in the mystery because you could kind of say it was supposed to be, like, um, you know, it's a mystery. It's, like, supposed to be a sp- bit spooky. Here, it's just, this is just a regular episode. What's with the filter? Actually, this was different than the mystery filter. The mystery just looked like they overexposed everything. This looked like they straight up put Vaseline on the lens. Yeah, like, it, it, it's way worse than the, uh, I'd say, the mystery filter. It just... Well, why do the Revice specials need filters? I mean, even, does the Veil special have a filter? I don't think so. The Veil special looks a lot like the show, actually. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, uh, uh, this Piper battle was not great. It has, like, fun moments, but you can easily find them on YouTube in, like, five years. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what, what score I gave this on my drama list. Let me go back and check. Yeah. Uh, would not recommend, like, maybe if you really need to watch it, just, like, skip to the build fight. Oh yeah, that's right. I couldn't. I couldn't mark it as finished yet, so I didn't score it. Uh, okay. but I, I'd, pr- I'd probably give it like a four. Yeah, not great. Probably the weakest revised product yet. Uh, um, but like on top of like good revised content, revised legacy, Common Under Veil, episode two, aka we finally find out where Iki gets it from. It's it it like his busybody attitude. Ah yeah, because the, the mom yeah yeah this and is- the. Uh, this was cute. This, this is just nice and wholesome until the last two minutes. <laughs> yeah, but that's like the point. It's supposed to be this really nice. Oh, let me, you haven't had a bath in a while. It's like uh, re- very wholesome, like just like good relationship building between the two, uh, like I- Igarashi parents. And, you know, like uh, and then it's like at the end, it's like just breaks her Urkel loving heart. And then that last shot of them in the jail, it's like, oh, yeah. oh, um. I'm enjoying this so far, and I'm and I'm looking forward to seeing how it wraps up. Is is there an, is there two or one more episode of this? Do you remember? There's five episodes. Oh, okay. So we still got a ways to go with this. Yeah. Um, who knows what other shenanigans may happy happen? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a bit of a bold prediction. I think the captain of the guard is gonna end up being that. Uh, that that overweight guy who we found out n- knew about Vale after he first transformed in the show. Yeah, that might that would fit into the Common Rider nineteen seventy one illusions, or at least he might like help him and like yeah. die like in nineteen seventy one. Yeah, because we know George's dad um helped helped him escape, or or at least recognized him after he got out. So. That that's probably involved on some level, and I'm willing to bet that other guy helped him on some level. Um, but they look nothing alike, and they haven't explicitly said it's him. So that's just conjecture on my part so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, hey, really enjoying this. Yeah. Now for the peak fiction, Avatar of Sentai Dawn Brothers, Episode Six, King Pheasant for a day. Yeah, that does say pheasant. Okay, this was really good. Dawn Brothers is six for six. Uh, yeah, this is another great episode. Uh, this show's on a bit of a hot streak at the moment. Um, my my only real critique or even real comment is um, I feel like they gave so much focus to the the character plot in this episode that the monster plot almost felt like an afterthought. Yeah, well, like the, like honestly, I'd prefer like the character plot taking over taking over rather than like a gimmicky monster plot. I, I do agree, um, but I also think there needs to be a bit more of a balance, and that just felt really jarring considering how well integrated it has been up to this point, and the fact that um, Zenkaiger, which we're, we're still coming down from, was so heavily focused on the monster plots of the week. Yeah. Uh, oh, at least, like, I really like w- uh, the l- lesson here in this episode, where it's like, don't sacrifice, like, you could sacrifice, like, where it's like, sometimes you gotta sacrifice your success for your own happiness. Mm-hmm. That hit hard, and it's like, the way they go about that, with, like, it, like, it's like, Kiji and his, like, slicked up car, that was, that was funny, and but really good, and... It was, uh, it was kind of a unique way to do, uh, um, it's always best to just be yourself, um, lesson for kids. Yeah, and it's like, especially when they said, well, 
Like, like at the end, Kaito like looks at the point score and he's like, "Well, he's the lowest, but at least he's happy." <laughs> mm-hmm. And the points mechanic is super interesting too. I hope they explain more of how that works um, in future episodes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they will. Like, there's a lot of mystery being built, and it seems like Don Brothers is going to be like a, lo- a long burn, like where it's like we're not, we're gonna, still going to be answering, asking questions up until like the 40s. So. Yeah, yeah, like, we just got the name of the villains in this episode. Yeah, which, uh, there's a bit of, uh, like, translation things, but our overtime is calling them Siberian? Cerebr- 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 is what Cerebr- I read that as. Cerebrand. Yeah, well, like, because of the Cerebo core in the brain, so that, mm-hmm. that's cute. Um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of fun moments, uh, we, we see the pattern. Pattern avatar change. Uh, that was nice. That's probably the only suit we're gonna see, but like, cause all the that there's only like like uh, from the Pattern Rangers, cause there's only a green and red one, and I don't think uh, Avataro is doesn't really. It's not really just ones that strike me to do many avatar changes. He only did one in the show so far. So, um, yeah, hmm. um, yeah. I, I just this was a really entertaining episode. Very wholesome. Like we get to explore more of the like the like relationship between like Kiji and his wife and just like how nice it's been and but like and it sounds like the wife was gonna say something but like of course classic in new miscommunication she passes out after mm-hmm. well i love that at the end of the episode she explicitly says she pref- she prefers him when he's when he's struggling more and i know that's that's meant to be like oh oh he's she likes him when he's motivated but i i kind of read that is oh she likes being with a guy that's less successful than her because it it makes her feel better about herself. Because because that feels weirdly realistic to me. Like I I feel like that's a thing that oh, some women out there do go for from from what I've seen about relationships um in the real world these days. Like that, I mean, that just felt much more grounded to me, and uh, it it was nice in its own way. Yeah, I mean it can work both ways, you know. Like, even if she doesn't mean it. Um, although, I, I did find it funny where, like, Mo- Momotaro's, like, si- like s- looking at the scene, and he's like, I can never please a woman, and I'm like, <laughs> that just cracked me up because it just felt a bit incel but, like, in, not in, like, an incel-incel way, just in, like, an accidental incel way. <laughs> yeah, this this time, you got the, the innuendo joke. Yeah, it's, uh, it, yeah. A lot of great character work in this episode. I uh, still like how the altars are being used as, like, these just, like, just whatever, like, you need them. And I, I kind of like how just you Inoue know, just doesn't give a shit about the altars, but he still has to include them, so it's like, okay, fine, I'll just, like, put it It here. seems like he doesn't give a shit about the toys in general. He's Because, he, like, there was no mech fight this week. It was just uh, it feels an like altar the mech, fight with one of the Sarabans. It feels like the mecha fight is more like, oh, like, we, we need to, like, save up budget for to do a good one. Because it's all, because it's, you know, mixed CG, and they're really good mecha fights, mostly. Uh, so, you know, like, it feels like that's more of a budget thing, and it's like, but, and also just to change up the formula, like, not every episode needs a mecha fight, which, you know, like, so we can spend a bit more time on, like, characters and story, and selling, like, the base toys. Um, yeah, also, like, actually, I don't, we don't have the article here, but we, Inoue, like, no, Shurker or Inoue, they were, like, giving, like, an interview of how they make the show. And it's like they were they were, they described how like Inu brother and Kiji brother CG are actually motion captured on set, which does explain some of the clipping people are noticing. And I actually think that's really cool, although it's still probably a bitch to work with because they have to have like a trailer full of computers. So I, I just find that tidbit fascinating. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah. It just it's always nice to you know like how they do the special effects in the special effects genre. <laughs> you know. But yeah, Don Brothers is super fun. Really, uh, also the scene of Momotaro like in like the blue and pink, the blue, blue and yellow, where they just be like, we're like blue and yellow said, we're not, we're we're normal, unlike you, and it's just like lies. You two are weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like yeah. yellow's like semi normal, but like she, you know, she still got some quirks in her. Yeah, I mean they they obviously meant we don't we're we're not super good at things and we don't have powers like you do but even then that's a bit of a stretch yeah uh, and it's like yeah it's clearly like you know it still kind of has nice to have like a loader red ranger like for a bit because he's like he's still like he's still load loading and brooding and kind of just being like man even my own team hates me but then again i kind of be have to be play like this kind of like motivational like egotistical maniac to like stuff so it's like yeah 
And, you know, I don't know, just so many interesting elements in this show. And just, like, we need to, I, I'm waiting for, like, the exclamations could break everything, because a show, like, that sets up a lot of mysteries, would they get explained or, like, built up upon that could break the entire show? But, like, I don't think that will happen. Yeah. E. Yeah, I've enjoyed Dark Matters a lot. Very good. Definitely, definitely. But, uh... That's it for new releases, so to go ahead and briefly go into some of my own rambling and ramblings, uh, I did watch more Kamen Rider Black this week. I watched episodes 10 through 14, and uh, they were all pretty good. Uh, Still very much in, um, not necessarily filler territory, because, like, it's a very different time for TV shows. It's it's just, you know, plot of the week, and it's all fairly solid plot of the week. Um... That being said, though, there was one fairly significant episode, and that's that I think it was episode 12 was the introduction of the Road Sector, which is Kamen Rider Black's second bike, technically third bike if you count his civilian one, um, that nobody ever talks about because it's, okay. it's way less cool than Battle Hopper, in my opinion. Like, Battle Hopper maybe doesn't perfectly aesthetically match up with Black, but Battle Hopper's sentient, and it looks like a thing a common rider would ride, and it has regenerative powers, and it's in all the marketing for Black. Road Sector just looks like a big toy, and it can go fast, and it has a little roof. But they did a whole episode explaining where it comes from, and and making a big deal out of the fact that Golgum really, really wants it until Black gets it, and then they just give up. Um... And that that also made me ask a ton of questions about the show's mythos. Like, what was was Black originally gonna get Road Sector before the the guy who was making it ran away with the plans and and the prototype? Did did they not have another copy of the plan somewhere? How does this? What advantage does this thing have over Battle Hopper besides the fact that it can go really fast? How does Battle Hopper feel about the fact that it has to share riding time with another bike now? Like, are they going to have a bitchy cat fight? Like, two two girlfriends fighting over a man? Can somebody write me that fanfic, please? Uh. You are a sad, strange, little, little man, big man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, overall, these episodes were pretty good, and, I, and I'm just enjoying the vibe of Black. Um, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, it's, it's a good classic kitschy show and it's because of that that uh while i was at the local comic-con on sunday um i uh ended up picking up um at the uh the one booth that's that's always there at local comic cons there's always one booth selling tokusatsu merch and uh this booth was mainly just import figures in general but they had a few tokusatsu figure arts they had the uh sinchoku seihos for black Shadow Moon and Ultraman Tiga, and since I only had enough money for one of them, it was obvious which one I was gonna get. I got Kamen Rider Moon. Black. What? I said Shadow Moon. Yeah, I, I got I got the character who I haven't even seen in the show yet. Um, though that being said, I would like to get Shadow Moon at some point down the road. Um, but obviously, I got Common Rider Black, and uh, this thing has kind of turned me around on figure arts, because uh, I don't know if I've talked about it very much on this uh, show, but I've I've kind of made it clear on my personal channel and on my Twitter that I'm not a big fan, or I haven't been a big fan of figure arts as a toy line, because the few I've gotten my hands on in the past have often felt finicky and have been prone to breakage. Um, and I'm aware that this one did have a few breakage issues when it first released, but... Uh, so far, the only issue with mine is that uh, the, um, I want to say, right-hand kneecap will sometimes pop off. It's got a bit of a loose connection, but that can that's only happened a handful of times, and if it really starts bugging me, I can just put a little dab of crazy glue in there and problem solved. Um, uh, but no, the actual figure itself is immaculate. Like, it's as good of a figure of black as you could possibly want. Every little line and wrinkle and fold and crease in the suit is there um the proportions are excellent it looks like it's an actual person wearing the costume um the paint is super crisp and is uh all all the details are as sculpted as well as painted um the articulation is 
all ex very well done and um, pretty unique feeling in terms of the limbs for me. I've never seen an articulation setup quite like the legs on this guy. And um, you could argue he's light on accessories because he comes with alternate hands, but he comes with like, I want to say five or six pairs of alternate hands. And unlike Lightning Collection, where you just get the, um, you get one alternate hand for each side and you rarely get a matching pair for every alternate hand there is a matching hand for the other arm so you can be symmetrical if you want to with any of the options um and the only other accessory he has is replacement antenna which i really appreciate because the last figure arts i owned was Common Rider Zio, and I ended up having to get rid of him because the antenna on mine broke and the piece was too small to super glue back together. Wait, Zeno these, or Zio? Uh, Zeno. Oh. Um, these are made so that they're um, not loosely, but uh, sort of delicately pegged into the head sculpt. They're separate pieces, so if you if you hit him against anything, they'll just pop out, and if you lose them in your carpet or something, you have replacements right there in the box. I really appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, I'm absolutely in love with this thing. I've been posting tons of pictures up of it up on my Instagram, and uh, it's it's kind of turned me around on figure arts. I might... Uh, I'm, I'm definitely at least going to get the battle hopper that goes with this guy at some point. I would like to get Shadow Moon, and... Uh, I'd be lying if I didn't say there were there are a ton of other Toku suits out there that I know are in figure arts, and I'm now reconsidering uh, my opinion on uh, whether I was going to get them or not. Really, I I have also bought a toy over the weekend, but also uh, just just a question: Do you think you like this because of its a, of the Sentoku Seho part? Because this is like a does that it does like kind of imply like an extra premium than regular figure arts. Well. Um, I guess that's something I should get into, because uh, this is technically the third figure art of Black. There was the original, which came out in 2009 um, to coincide with his his appearance in Kamen Rider Decade. Um, then there was the Renewal, which was in 2013. And for my money, it uh, looked really good at the time and didn't really need an another update. But then they did the Sinchoku Seiho last year, which is the one I had. Um, and uh, it's it's really good, but the uh, the Sinchoku Seiho, um, that branding isn't necessarily supposed to be premium. That's not necessarily what that's supposed to mean. It's just to mean that this is an update that's as oh. close as, it's as close as they can physically make it to the actual suit with modern technology. I um, see. Uh, that's that's why black is. Uh, I think there's one or two, or two other writers that have had both a Renewal and a Sinchoku Seiho, because Renewal and Sinchoku Seiho are technically supposed to be the same thing. It's just they, they did Renewal first for a couple of years, and then they switched the branding to Sinchoku Seiho, which uh, I think I explained this in an early episode of Twit, but Sinchoku Seiho translates to true bone carving. Um, ah. So it's it's like, like, like I said with this um, thing, every... Every wrinkle and fold that you see in the suit in the show is there on the figure. Like, there's not a smooth surface on him, except for the shoulder pads, which I didn't even realize this watching the show, but I went and looked at some HD screen caps. Yeah, all of Black's suit, except for his helmet and his shoulder pads, are like this matte, plevery, rougher texture. And then the shoulder pads and the helmet are like a glossy black, like they've been really polished. Um, yeah. uh, but I actually, I forgot that I technically got some Toku toys over the weekend. I bought a bunch of Lego Toku minifigs. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. You were talking about these on uh, components, which will be out on Friday. Yeah, I got, like, an Ultraman Lego, which is, like, the original suit. And it comes with no accessories, but it's pretty neat. I like, I like, very great carving of the face. Uh, you know, mm. funny little guy. And then I got a set with Power Rangers Legos. Uh, now, they're all minifigs, and they all actually come with accessories. Uh, they have little removable helmets, and they're really nice Lego minifigs. You know, just and nice I, little... And I forget, which version of the team was this supposed to be? Uh, Emma, okay, so it's a mix. So I got the both white and green Tommy from, like, the original show. 
But then the rest were like the 2017 suits. Interesting. And, like, yeah, so they have their like the 2017, not 27. They have the 1993 weapons, but I guess the person selling it just really like thought like I need to do the latest updated suits. Mm-hmm. And you know it works fine. You know I actually think they look better. Like they like it, like seeing them like whenever the 2017 suits actually have proper coloring, I'm I'm okay with them. But like whenever I see them in the movie itself, it's like Ugh. yeah, you know. That actually does bring an interesting question to my mind, though. Um, do you think we'll ever get new figures of the 2017 designs in the Lightning Collection? It would be premium because they yeah. would have, because from what I know, like with the Battle for the Grid game, they already have to negotiate with Lionsgate to get 2017 blue in that game. Mm. So it's like they would have to work with like Lionsgate to like reprint those figures. It would probably be like a Comic Con thing. Yeah, it would uh, have to be like a one-off Pulse exclusive or something. Yeah. I probably wouldn't buy them, but hey, if they want to, sure, why not? If I could if I could get just the Red Ranger or like I could buy just the Red Ranger separately from somebody on the aftermarket, I'd do that, but I'm I'm not buying that whole team. Yeah. Again, like they, these are really nice minifigs. I actually really like how it came with two dragon daggers just because like Red also gets a dragon dagger. Yeah. Um and yeah, those are probably the only MMPR merch I'm gonna get for a bit because it's not supporting Hasbro, and I don't like. I have a, like a rule where like I'll buy Power Ranger stuff, but I'm not buying it MMPR because I don't want to like be part of the over- why the reason they keep making it. You don't also want to got, be hashtag part of the problem. Yeah, uh, I also have a Voltron Lego minifig, which is really good, but Voltron's not Tokusatsu. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, apparently they're making a live action movie, so maybe I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see. We might. I don't know. I'm not going to make any promises about whether we'd cover that or not. Yeah, uh, and that's probably not going to be for years from now because it's just under development. Anyway, uh, I think that's enough podcasting. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much everything there is. So, uh, Buster, go ahead and tell the good people who you are and where they can find your content. What's up? I'm Buster Corp. I do video essays on the internet, and I recently posted a video about Sonic and the Black Knight. I thought it was okay. I kind of rushed it, but hey, you know, well, go watch it anyway. I'm also on Twitter at BusterBully3, where I'm tweeting and posting stupid memes about Ramadan. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. All right. Well, I am The Vacuuminator. I make YouTube videos sometimes when I have time. Uh, those will be over at YouTube.com slash The Vacuuminator. I'm also on Twitter tweeting and tweeting about every little thing whenever that thought enters my head. So go and follow me at The Vacuuminator. And if you want to see pictures of action figures I buy and dogs that live in my house, uh, you can do so by following me on Instagram at the underscore Vacuuminator. But that is going to do it for this week in Tokusatsu. Thank you for joining us, everyone. We'll see you back here next week when we talk about whatever happens that week in Tokusatsu. (laughs) 